You're about to spend a lot of money on solar panels and a battery. And your quotation says you'll get payback in a few years. Do you have confidence with their figures? In this video, I want to show you how you can work out the payback yourself. Hi there, and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. In my first video, we looked at how solar technology can dramatically reduce your bills. And in my second video, we looked at the equipment you'll need and how to get it. In both of those videos, my aim is to give everyone the lowdown on solar in a very short time, so they can make the best decisions on what is a huge financial investment. Now, although my channel is UK focused, even if you live elsewhere, just about everything I cover is applicable all over the world. That's just the nature of solar. OK, are you ready for some calculations? Let's go. This chart is probably a good place to start. With no investment into solar, and assuming no changes in the cost of electricity, we could plot a line like this, showing cumulative spend over the next few years from now. The slope of the line indicates the cost per kilowatt hour. In our example here, it is £2,500 per year. The higher the slope, the greater that cost. Now let's make an investment into solar, represented here by the green line. On day one then, we've spent, say, a whopping £12,000, and that hurts. Not only that, we're still spending on electricity, and so the line continues to grow upwards. The good news, though, is that the rate of that spend is dramatically reduced because of the savings we're now making given our investment. This is reflected in the slope of the green line being less than the first line. If we extend those lines out further, we can see that they eventually cross each other. What does that mean? Well, this is the break-even point. It's where our original investment plus the reduced electricity costs matches what we would have paid over the years if we had not invested in solar. This is the point where our original investment is paid off. And if we draw a line down to the bottom, we can see that for our example here, this happens after six years. What does it mean for us after this point? Well, no further investment is to be paid off. We can simply enjoy the cumulative savings between the lower amount we're paying for electricity now and what we would have paid had we not made the investment. OK, but what would the impact be if electricity prices change during our payback period? Well, if the price went up, say, three and a half years into our investment, the slope of the line would increase after that point. Actually, the slope of both lines would increase, but only marginally for the green line. So to keep things simple in our chart, we'll just keep the green line as it is. We can see that the first effect of that change is that the payback period shortens, in this case, to five years. And the second effect is that the continued level of savings after payback has been reached is larger. But of course, what goes up can always come down, and any reductions in the price of electricity will have the opposite effect. The payback period increases, in our example here, to seven years and the continued level of savings after payback has been reached is now lower. In addition to the payback period, you may have also heard talk about return of investment, or ROI. We can cover what that is just now using the same example. Without any investment in solar, the cost of electricity per year is £2,500. But we made a £12,000 investment, and let's say this reduces the cost of electricity per year to 833 we can calculate that cost saving per year as the difference between the two. £2,500 less £833 is £1,667. From this, we can calculate the payback period, which is simply the size of the investment divided by the cost saving per year. That works out to just over seven years. We can also work out the return of investment as a percentage by dividing the cost saving per year by the size of the investment. This works out to around 14%. What does that mean? If you put that £12,000 into a bank account, you would get a cheque for £1,667 every year, which is 14% of the amount invested. That's pretty good, given that most bank accounts give you maybe 1% or 2% every year. OK, looking back at the table, we can pull out the pertinent factors and rearrange them to understand the dependencies on the payback period. You can see the payback really depends on three main factors. The cost of electricity if you did not make any investment, the size of your investment, and the reduced cost of electricity resulting from that investment. We should also note that the reduced cost of electricity depends on the kind of investment made too. 
We also know that the cost of electricity before and after your investment depends on the price per kilowatt hour. So let's start here and work back up to the payback period. By the way, if you're liking my videos, it would help me out a lot if you would like and subscribe to them. It's easy to do and you'll be the first to see all my future videos. Thank you. What you're seeing here is a chart of domestic energy costs for a typical household in the UK. There is a price cap operating in the country, which places a ceiling on how much energy companies can charge per kilowatt hour for both gas and electricity. What's depressing about this chart is that we're only here today and although we've already experienced a 50% hike compared to the last few years of stable pricing, you can see what would have been coming and that would have been devastating for millions of families across the country. And part of the reason for this is that here in the UK we're very much dependent on natural gas for heating during the winter months. Thankfully the British government is stepping in and creating a new price gap that limits the price for a typical household to £2,500 per year for both electricity and gas. Although we can see the price will be stable for the next year or two, what we really want to build is a table with prices per kilowatt hour for that same period, like this. Looking at the National Energy Regulator's website, what I've done here is put in today's prices on the left column and then estimated the price per kilowatt hour going forward. This table then gives us a reasonable set of pricing over the next few years, which you can use in your payback calculations. Let's plot this pricing on a chart. So what about future pricing beyond that point? Your investment might be over five to eight years. What will happen to electricity pricing over that time? Will it continue to rise sharply again after the UK government's intervention ends? I hope not. Or will it continue to rise but only in line with inflation? Or will it start to fall over the next few years as renewables make up a higher percentage of the energy mix? It's hard to know, but my own guess is that the answer will be somewhere closer to three as the UK and other countries take more control over their energy supply and increase their investments into renewables. It's important to consider this because reducing prices will increase your payback period, as we saw earlier. It's far better then to err on the side of caution in your calculations. OK, so now you have a fairly good handle on the price per kilowatt over the next few years. Using these estimates, you can immediately predict the cost of electricity over the next few years if you didn't make any investment into solar. But it doesn't completely provide the cost of electricity without a solar investment because this is also dependent on the size and shape of the investment itself. So let's get into the detail of what that investment will look like and what impact that will have on the cost of electricity per year with solar. For most people, a large part of the investment will be made into solar panels, but many people will want to include a battery as well. And some people might be looking to only have a battery, either because they can't have or simply don't want solar panels on their roof. We'll be covering all three, starting with just solar panels. And the way in which we're going to do this is to look at energy generation and consumption on a daily basis. Then we'll calculate how that will vary across a whole year. The first step on this journey then is to map out your electricity consumption throughout the day. You can get this information in a few different ways. The easiest way is probably to log into your energy provider's website or app and look at your usage graphs for a selection of days at different times of the year and take an average. I tried this with my supplier, but as you can see, despite them having fitted my smart meter in the first place, hourly data is just not available. One of the reasons I'll be changing away from them shortly. Another way is to use a third party service like Loop in the UK. These kinds of services link directly to your country's central smart meter data repository and will require your permission in the app. With Loop, this was achieved by entering my credit card details, although no payment was taken. Then within the app, you can see your electricity on an hourly basis. Yet another way is to use a power monitoring device, which either talks directly to your smart meter, or in the case of my own monitor, obtains real-time usage via a CT clamp attached to the supply line of the meter itself. Your unit may automatically compute your hourly usage, if not, you can just make a note of the instantaneous usage every 30 minutes, say, during the day, and perhaps estimate the overnight hours by taking a reading just when you wake up. Here then is what your daily consumption might look like. By the way, if you have an electric vehicle, I would recommend you treat the electricity consumption for charging that vehicle separately from your normal home consumption. 
not least because you might be benefiting from a low cost overnight tariff and outside of that you'll likely only want to charge with excess solar on sunny days. Therefore try to discount that usage from your data for the moment. What we're going to do now then is overlay what electricity you would typically generate from solar panels during a summer's day. You can see that between the hours of 6am and 6pm your solar generation will cover nearly all of your usage during that time. For a solar only installation you can certainly generate revenue by selling all of that excess generation throughout the day back to the grid but you might also want to look at shifting some of your current usage into the middle of the day for example running appliances like dishwashers, washing machines and tumble dryers when the sun is out. Small changes in behaviour like this allow you to benefit greatly from your solar installation. There are a number of ways to determine the size of solar array that you would need to cover a large percentage of your usage. And if you've had solar quotations already, they might indicate how much solar generation to expect over an entire year. But that kind of figure doesn't really help you work out how much electricity is going to cost you over different months of the year, especially over winter when generation is a lot lower than over summer. What I'd like to take you through now then is a much more informed way to calculate the costs for different sizes of solar array for your own consumption. We'll be using a spreadsheet but don't worry, it's a straightforward process and I'll take you through it step by step. So here we are in Microsoft Excel and I've created a new spreadsheet and you can see here I've got a column here with the hour of the day going from midnight all the way through to the day and back to midnight again. Then I've created a second column and here all I've done is taken the values from the chart and put them into numeric form into this column. I've also shaded these cells in orange to denote that these can be modified and I've created a total for that consumption at the bottom there. Next I've created what I've called a solar model which is effectively the energy coming from the sun every hour of the day modelled between 0 and 1. Now that by itself doesn't help us but when I show you the next column this is the actual solar generation that you would achieve for a given array size. So you can see at the top left there we have the maximum output from our array if I set this to 1 then you can see that the values exactly match the solar model. So the idea of the solar model is that it allows us to enter any array size and that will give us the correct figures for that array size. And again I've totaled the amount of solar generation for the entire day at the bottom. Now to make things slightly more complicated you can see I've added a new variable here which is the maximum inverter output. Now the idea here is that your solar array can be larger than your inverter size. So let me just set the inverter size to 3.68 kilowatts. What you can see now is that we get some clipping in the middle of the day. Having a larger solar array size compared to your inverter is actually a good thing, especially when it comes to the winter months when there is limited sun. So we have enough information in our spreadsheet now to work out the grid import throughout the day in kilowatt hours. It is essentially the difference between our home consumption and the solar generation. And again I've totaled this at the bottom. What we'd like to do now then is turn the kilowatt hours into a cost. And to do this I've first created a column that contains the cost per kilowatt hour. And to make it flexible this rate can change throughout the day. To keep things simple then let's just keep it as a fixed rate. With both the grid import amounts and the cost per kilowatt hour we can calculate the import cost as I've done here. And the figure at the bottom then is the cost for the entire day. Now for the times during the day where the home consumption is less than the solar generation we can export that amount and so I've captured that here in this column. And just like we did for the import we can turn these values into a cost by adding an export price per kilowatt on the left. And you can see what those costs look like in this new column. And just to the right of that you can see the total daily cost which is the total import cost less the revenue generated from export. Finally, just to finish off the spreadsheet, I've added some extra detail on the left, including a disclaimer and a way to check for newer versions of this spreadsheet in case of any errors.
Feel free to try different values with this spreadsheet in order to calculate what your own costs will be. Let's now look at the difference adding a battery makes to your solar setup, and you might be surprised how effective that is. Here is the spreadsheet from earlier, which was just solar, and now we can add in battery. I've shaded that as green so you can see the new columns and information. At the moment the battery size is 0 kilowatt hours, but now we can put in a value for the battery and see what effect that has on the daily cost. Let's try 5 kilowatt hours. You can see that by doing that we have more than half the cost of the electricity. If we change from a 5 kilowatt battery to a 10 kilowatt battery, you can see the daily cost comes down to almost zero. You'll see on the left that you can input values for the charging losses and discharging losses for the battery. Normally for AC coupled batteries you would set these to 6% and 3% and for DC coupled batteries you can set these to 0% and 3%. In addition to that you can set the maximum charge and discharge rate for the battery which you can get from the datasheet. These rates are important because if your home consumption is greater than those values then you will be pulling from the grid. Now that you have a good handle on how to work out your electricity costs with solar and battery, we can now use the same utility to see how those costs will change throughout the year. As a starting point, let's see how solar generation varies across each month of the year. If you watched my previous video, you'll remember that we used a special online utility to determine typical solar generation across the year from any location on the planet. For your location, the chart might look something like this. For our calculations, we're more interested in the relative generation between summer and other times of the year, so let's mark the average summer months as 100%. We can now look at the winter months and mark a rough percentage compared to the summer months. In our case here, it is roughly 30%. And finally, we do the same for the remainder of the year, essentially spring and autumn together. In our example here, this works out to roughly 70%. With those percentages, you can rerun the spreadsheet for those three times of the year, reducing the maximum power output in each case on the spreadsheet. In order to build a fairly accurate picture of your annual electricity costs for various solar installation sizes, the idea here is that you want the biggest bang for buck for the lowest cost of electricity throughout the year for the smallest outlay on equipment. That said, you might want to consider putting the largest array that you can get on your roof given the lowest relative cost of solar panels against the rest of the system and the fact that you are outlaying for scaffolding anyway. There is one final piece to the jigsaw and that is an installation comprising of just a battery. Not everyone is able to have solar panels and many people might not want solar panels on their roof. The good news is that battery prices have come down a lot over recent years and with the rising prices of energy many people see this as a viable solution even without solar panels. In the spreadsheet, you'll see a special section where you can make cost calculations for just such an installation. This spreadsheet is very similar to the previous one, except this time you can set an off-peak cost per kilowatt hour and a peak cost per kilowatt hour. To keep things simple, in this spreadsheet we assume that off-peak starts from midnight. Again, you can try various sizes of battery, and ideally in this scenario you want a battery which is roughly the same size as your home consumption. Notice that depending on the charging rates, you may not be able to charge the battery fully in the time that you have during off-peak hours, so there are many considerations to take into account. If you've managed to stay with me so far, well done. I know spreadsheets are not for everyone. By the way, if anyone spots any errors in the spreadsheets, please do let me know in the comments and I'll get them fixed. OK, here's where we've got to in terms of calculating our payback. By trying various scenarios in the spreadsheet, different size solar arrays and different size battery, you've hopefully been able to work out an optimum solution for your situation. So now we know the amount of money for that solar investment. And we also know the electricity cost per year with that installation. And this means we have all three inputs into the payback period, so you are now able to calculate this. Here is the table again from earlier to help you with the payback calculation. What I've tried to show you in this video is that by taking the time to understand how your installation will work from day to day, you'll have a much better handle on the level of savings that you'll achieve with different sizes of array, inverter and battery. 
and all against a changing price per kilowatt hour over the next few years. And because of that, you'll be able to better estimate your annual savings. None of this will take away the pain of having to shell out a large amount of money in the first place, but it will help you be confident of those future returns. Until my next video then, thanks for all your support.